Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 22. Right, we'll stop that one there a second, and we're just going to pop into construction mode. We're going to go to production, and this one is going to be under greenhouses. Now, there is a small greenhouse there for 3,000. Take goods, you've got to put water into them. Now, we've got a watered Bowser, so we're able to do that. Then you've got the medium greenhouse of five grand. So you've got a small one here, which is about the size of the tractor. Medium one, to be honest, looks about the same. Little bit longer, but it's like a double section. So maybe a little bit more than twice the size of the small one. Looking at that little bit more than twice the size of the small one. And then we've got a big one there for 10 grand. And I would say that is double the length. So that's doubled up again. So this one here is a tad more than double the size of the smallest one. And then that is just doubled again. So as far as cost is concerned, the medium one for going for the cheapest option for value this one seems to have the least value for money and then the medium and the large ones they do seem to be about the same when it comes to value for money so i'm thinking that for us personally we would be better off going for the medium ones because there's less terrain um alterations that have to be made in order to be able to place it down you look at that one you've got a lot of terrain that has got to be altered in order for that one to slot in whereas this one has got a much smaller area of terrain that's got to be moved um so we can sort of step them around a little bit if that's what we want to do so all we have to do is find a suitable place to plonk the thing down now 5600 right in there like that so it's only 600 that we're having to spend here. 11,200. Pretty much the same landscaping costs for the big one versus the small one. If we can get 5,800, that would be 11,900 for that. Two of those. 11,200 in there. All right, so it does actually seem that maybe the bigger one is going to work out a bit better. So I think just one greenhouse for now. It's just finding the right place to put it. Because we've also got to be able to pick the pallets up. Although I believe with the greenhouses, you don't have to worry too much about picking, greenhouse, uh, picking the pallets up. Ooh, did you see that? Fraction over is 11,052 right there. If I bring it round that way. No, nope, that's gone up a bit in price. 10,900. There. That one is about the cheapest point that we can get. So we now can state that that's the area there that we want to put the greenhouse in. So we will start up. And we're going to take a reasonable area of land over here that we're going to mow out now. So I'm going to start it from this way. I'm going to sort of go up near those trees and we'll go close to where we cut before. We're 11.37 in August. We haven't even had a single night go past yet in this series. We will, we will, don't worry. Let's start that one up. Is he going to be able to cope with it? Well, it's definitely going to be faster than the last mower. I know that much. Which is a good job, really, because we're doing a much bigger area of land. I'm going to go about this far. I'm not going to go any further than that. I don't want to do an excessive amount. I know that I've got a huge, great big meadow here that I could do if I wanted to. But I'm choosing not to. I am going to do a reasonable area here. Because what I'm thinking is that we will keep some of the grass for the sheep. See, we're going to go for quite a chunk here. Um, we're going to keep some of the grass for the sheep. But we will also sell some of the hay as well. And that's going to help us pay for some other stuff. And I feel that other stuff is quite a nice thing to have. I like stuff. Stuff is always good. 
fair sized meadow there that I'm chopping out so I might decide to change up the hay turner as well let's bring that one in there like that okay so we are now able to start going around the inside edges a little bit more We've got some bumpy areas in the middle of this field that I see there. But generally speaking, I don't think this is going to be too much of a problem. Yes, we could have had another mower, a side-mounted one, and we could have done this a lot faster. The other mower was double the amount of money, though, and I didn't really want to be spending that kind of money at the moment. Our contract over there... I should have had a look to start with to see if the hired help costs were going to be any higher. Ooh! Me? Well, we're, we're doing ploughing, so the only thing that that tractor would be using is fuel, but, I mean, we can just check in here. 73% done on there. I want to go to that one. They're all off for refilling and everything. They're all turned off. And... Dollars over here, euros over here, wage payment, 2,200. Good gravy. That is ridiculously expensive. 2,203. We're on 74% done. We're going to stop. As soon as the farmer says we're happy with the job, we don't want you to do anymore, we're going to stop. Because it's going to end up costing us money. That is... An utterly obscene amount of money that we are spending on wages for that job. So it, it definitely seems that using hired help to do some of these jobs is not going to be profitable unless we can use our own machines. And then you still got to take into account the cost of the repairs as well. So there's another slight balancing act that we've got to pull out. Would it even be possible to do a contracting thing um, and spin a profit on it? I don't know at the moment. I genuinely don't know. I mean, I would hope that it would be profitable to eventually do a load of contracts. Ploughing is never one that has earned a lot of money anyway. We know that. Ploughing, cultivating, those types of ones... We always sort of figured that you were breaking even on those jobs anyway. Like, it, it was never a job that you were going to make a vast amount of money on. I'm going to turn around in a minute because I actually find it more difficult driving this way. Not turn the tractor around, um, as in put the mower on the front of the tractor. I'm going to turn around and drive this way around the field because that way I'm facing the right way for me to be driving. It's, it's easier for me like this. See? I find it easier to be hooked onto this side of the tractor. Maybe bring it around a little bit. There. That must be really difficult to drive. With a steering wheel off to the side like that? Has anyone ever driven one of the old Valtras and had to do that? Have you ever driven one of these machines where you got the steering wheel off to the side like that and had a go with it? If you have... Please get into the comment section and tell me all about it. Is it as awkward to drive as it looks? Because to me, that does seem like it would be a difficult thing to do. I mean, not impossible. I'm not saying that, you know, you just, you just wouldn't be able to do it. I'm saying that it would take a bit of getting used to. And it wouldn't be the easiest of things to get used to either. It's a very, very different scenario for steering on a small steering wheel as well, out to the side like that. Um, and I'm someone that can very easily switch between uh, driving a bobcat, driving a swing shovel, driving a car, a tractor. I can jump between all of them. Like, you drive a bobcat, and the driving bit is done with the with, with two bars, um, where you're, you're sort of driving the wheels almost like a... a um, well, like you're driving an excavator, you've got two levers for operating the wheels. And then the pedals, they control the arm of the machine. And then you jump straight into a tractor and your hands are 
controlling the controls for the tractor and your feet are controlling the driving of the tractors in complete reverse and I can jump between the two without any trouble I've never had any problem with quickly getting the hang of new controls on different machines and jumping between the two of them so I have had quite a bit of experience with operating all kinds of different machines with all kinds of different controls and I'm looking at that and I'm thinking that would be really difficult to do like that to me seems like it would be a very tricky thing to do I mean you'd, you'd get used to it I, I, I've got no doubt that you could get used to it but I still think it would be tricky I mean I can see looking at it there why it would possibly be done off to the side I mean yes for one it it's an older tractor, so it was, a, I'm guessing, a, a newer kind of um, option to be able to drive from the rear like that. So it's sort of a, a bit more exper experimental, a cutting-edge technology when it was first developed. I don't know how long they'd been doing that at this point. But using it like that out to the side, yeah, you know, you've got, much, you've got plenty of visibility as well still seems really difficult still seems something that would be a, a genuinely tricky thing to master anyone love to hear about it i really would if you've ever had experience driving with the steering wheel off to the side like that please get into the comment section tell me about it what was it like is it actually as tricky as i think it might be or is it sort of a a thing takes you know you drive it for 10 minutes and you, you do get the hang of it that's the, the, the thing with a lot of these um, different um, machines and, and stuff like that. You know, it's, it's, it's all brand new. But you spend 10 minutes driving it. You, you start to get used to it and getting a feel for it. After 10 minutes, you, you really do sort of pick it up pretty quick. And you, you can carry right on with it then. Is it like that? Or is it as tricky as I think it is? Okay. We shouldn't take too long to finish this now, I don't think. We've done several rounds around the outside. I think, to be honest, the most time-consuming bit is going to be rowing it up. Well, actually, no. The, the most time-consuming bit for us is going to be picking the bales up. Because we don't have 60,000 euros to be um, going and buying one of those bale things. The bale collectors. And we don't have any other way of doing it. The one rule that I have for this series, I have, I, previous hardcore series, I've had a whole load of different rules that we have to abide by, um, like talking about possibly we spend more, if we have to spend more than 2,000 euros on repairing a vehicle, then we have to either take it down to the dealership and do it, or we have to have a farm workshop to do it, um, but you know, that's, that's a, a minor thing. The only rule that I'm really wanting to stick to with this series is no leasing. We're not going to have any leasing and we're not going to have any additional... Well, there's no additional. There, there is no loan anyway. No loan, no leasing. That's our rules. We need to do this series, no loan and no leasing. I just want to see if we can do it. Maybe for a future hardcore series, we will allow loans and leasing as well. We, we could do both. Entirely up to you, the viewers, if that's what you want to see in a future one. But this one, I want to see if we can do it. Can we do this with no loan and leasing? We've got a brand new game here. We've already established that doing a ploughing job using hired help is pretty much a non-starter. If we've got our tractor here and we can do a ploughing job with a bigger plough maybe... Then we could probably do it because we're using our own machine and we've got a bigger plow so we're able to get the job done a bit faster as well. That might work. But the way that it's set out at the moment, plowing job is not something that is going to make us any money. I wonder if I can keep this lined up, keeping it sideways on like that so we've got some tractor to look at while I'm herring down across the hill here. Let's see if we can do that for you. 
It's difficult when you're zoomed in as well. Trying to get the edge of the grass lined up. Mm, sort of. I feel like I'm a little bit all over the place with this. Uh, let's do the... Do this side. Up here. I would like to... I've never driven a tractor backwards. I would like to have a go with one. The new ones these days, the steering wheel's right in the middle and they actually look quite comfortable and I would imagine that the visibility that you get from doing this would be absolutely amazing. I'd, I'd, I'd really like to have a go with it one day. It's not something that I've ever been able to... Not something I've ever had the privilege of trying. And I think it would be a really awesome thing to be able to do as well. Now... This is the rough bit right there. There's like quite a bit of a pit in the ground just there. It's not like I'm not going to go around and do a whole load of leveling work on the fields or anything like that. We will be doing some leveling work when we build stuff and things like that. But generally this is a mountain meadow. So we just mow what we can and we leave the rest. And yes, we will advance later on to plowing some of it up so that we can start a machine doing a bit of mowing somewhere on a meadow and then we can have the hired help carry on and just you know get on with the work that's something that we will do later right now it's not something that we're going to do you down here because plowing this and then we would need to de-stone it because we got stones turned on so if we plow it we are going to have stones turned up which means that we would definitely need to be getting the stone picker and going over the land with that. It's not something that I want to do at the moment. I'm going to go and check on that plow again in a minute. This, this is taking quite a while, isn't it? This is definitely taking a while. May have misjudged this. We might want a slightly bigger machine. Although I, I, I have taken out like quite a big chunk of grass to do as well. I mean, that is the whole point of this hardcore series, is that we do do everything. And that's the other point of it, is that um, I show everything as well. Like, I can't just go and grab a load of money and bring in stuff to make all the jobs a lot easier. I kind of need to show everything as we go along. And I don't cut bits out. But what I've also got to do is find that balance so that you're not bored to tears watching the same thing. And I think that is going to happen if we do too much more of this. So let's just stop you there for a minute and we will go and take a look at this one. He's getting closer to finishing the field. We're on 91%. This is good. This is good. I like 91%. Wage payments at 2,900. Ooh. Right, we're not going to jump in and do this to help the machine. We're not going to help out this job because we want to find out um, if this is in any way profitable. But 2,900 so far on wage payments. Are these jobs figured out on a basis of... The wages. That's 2,800 on there. 3,360. The little tiny bit of profit. And we lose the profit because we've borrowed the machinery from the farmer. If we had our own machinery, potentially, it could be profitable. Like this one. This one would be profitable. We, we borrowed the machinery for 560. Field 1. Have a look up here. Field 1 is not all that big, and the stuff is taken into there, right? So Field 1, mow it, rake it, do all the stuff that we need to do, and then we bring the bales in and we sell them in the animal dealer in there. That one would actually be a profitable job. We could do that. Make silage bales. We'd have to wrap them, and then we'd have to pick them up one way or another. Fertilizer jobs, I suspect those would also be profitable. Harvesting job, well, that one there, the canola one, if any of them. And then we've got a whole load of spraying jobs here, herbicide. 
A lot of herbicide jobs there. Again? I reckon that herbicide jobs would be profitable. It's the likes of the ploughing and the cultivating, but they've never been particularly profitable. Like, we, we, you've never been able to go and take a plough... Um, a, take a ploughing contract and make a vast amount of money from it. It, it, it. They've always been very poor paying jobs. And usually we expected them to about break even, make it, maybe make a little bit of money. It's just that now we've gone past the whole breaking even situation and this is just going to cost us money. Go and have a look in here and... Yeah, th we're on three grand right now. I reckon it's um, going to push to about 3,300. So we're going to lose the cost of leasing the machinery. And yeah, I know I'm losing the money by refusing to jump on that tractor and do the job. But that's the whole point of this. I want to find out what it's going to cost us. That's, 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 that's what we're trying to do here. So start you up and lower you down. Uh, tool attached incorrectly. Can I use hired help here? Is it actually classed? It is. It's classed as a field. Isn't it? Oh, maybe not. Growth? No. We've we've got no, we've we've got none of it, so it's it's not gonna actually be classed as a field, despite the fact that I've got needs ploughing and needs lime all over it. Although I do have fertilizer going on there, I really don't get how it works now. Do I need to plough this up or not? Like that's now been fertilized. Can I go and put fertilizer down? I don't think I can put fertilizer down over the top of it. But that said, tool in attached incorrectly. We we'll soon find out about the um, hired help being able to work here. I don't think it can, though. I'm pretty sure this isn't classed as field in any way. If it is classed as field, I'd be very, very surprised. But I reckon if we do one more round this way, then the rest of it we will do out the little section so it's quite rough right there which I do wonder if we're going to be able to properly rake that the, the hay turner I think we'll probably be alright with but it's raking and baling it I don't know if we're going to be able to get all of that picked up properly we'll soon find out and down around here one aspect of seasons that I don't like at the moment is the fact that you still have instant hay. One thing I didn't like about the previous version of Seasons is that you didn't need to use a hay turner on it at all. You never needed to, well, unless you mowed directly after rain. If you mowed as soon as the rain had finished um, and the ground hadn't dried out properly, then um, you had to use a hay turner in order to get the grass to the next stage and then it would dry by itself. But usually if you waited until the ground was a bit drier, like the crop was a bit drier, so uh, you waited to the point where you could take a combine into the fields, um, you didn't need to use a hay turner at all. And I didn't like that because I know in the southern US you can do that and other warmer places, but generally, like I, I come from a country where even if it's really, really, really hot and dry, you've still got to turn your hay at least three times before you're close to it being done. Usually, right, contract on field 13 has it finished. Let's skip over to that one really quick. I'm stopping right there. I'm stopping right there. So that's how much more we've got to do. Jump out of there. And yeah, that's our land up there. We want to go down here. So this job is completed. 2,000... 597. So let's collect that. 2,597. And then we can go and have a look at our money in here. Uh, so we have got uh, construction costs. We want the money coming in. Contract income, 2,597. Wage payments, 3,251. Yeah. If we had done that with our own piece of machinery, 
then we wouldn't have had that. We would have had repair costs to deal with, but we wouldn't have had that bit there going out. Uh, that that would have been higher that would have been 3360 so we would have ended up with 110 euros in profit but then if you take out the amount of damage it would have done to the tractor and the plow by doing that work probably still wouldn't be profitable trying to use hired help so hired help on contracts certainly for things like plowing cultivating um possibly using a weeder as well bits borderline potentially not profitable in the slightest uh for other contracts i think it is still going to be all right so if we do spraying i reckon that'd be all right the fertilizer i reckon those would make us some money you still got to buy the stuff but we have cheaper options for fertilizer now if you buy big bags rather than pallets it's cheaper to buy it although i don't know if a big bag, because if you buy the pallet, I don't know if all of you are aware of this. You go into there, you got big bag pallets and you got big bags. So right there, it's 1,920 to buy a thousand liters of fertilizer. If I go here, it's 1,820 to buy a thousand liters of fertilizer. So it's cheaper to buy that. But what I don't know is if you go and park your vehicle next to one of those, you can just press R and you can load it straight from the pallet. I don't know if you can do that with a big bag. Also, with a big bag, the only way to move them, you can't do it with pallet forks. You have to have a big bag lifter. You don't have a big bag lifter. I, well, you might better do it with the pallet fork and hook it into the top. I'm not actually sure about that. Front loader tool. There, big bag lifter right there. It picks up locks onto the top of the big bag and then you can pick up one or two right here you can't do it with the skid steer i'm assuming you can't oh apparently you can't do it with a telehandler either that's weird that really is weird why can't you why can you only use a front loader for that is there an option on the big bag lifter to change? No, there's no option to change it. It is literally tractor only. Well, not tractor, front loader. Front loader, because uh, you do have uh, front loaders here. These are now also front loaders. Anyway, that's, that's how it is. So we could potentially be able to do that. Um... I mean, we've got a front loader and a tractor, so if we found out that we had to have that in order to be able to pick those bags up, we're in a situation where we would be able to go and do that, which is fortunate for us. But whether or not we would want to be going and doing that, that I'm not so sure about. Right, just bring you up here. Have we got any wool coming out yet? Apparently not. So we're going to put a greenhouse in here. I am also going to want some beehives so that we can get a supply of honey coming out as well. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.